Lake Mead was filled with deep midnight blue water in 2000, flooding the banks of the rivers that fed it. However, it has shrunk dramatically in the last 20 years. Its basins are also lighter, almost turquoise in spots, indicating progressively shallow seas linked by exceedingly narrow gorges. The lake is now surrounded by a puckered coastline and a white shadow, the so-called bathtub ring, remains of salts and minerals left behind on the canyon walls by retreating water. So, in today's movie, we'll see how much the water levels at Lake Mead have dropped and how this may affect the people of the states. But first, please subscribe to our channel. These lakes were astoundingly full 20 years ago, Jennifer Pitt, the National Abaddon Society's Colorado River Program Director, said of Lake Mead and Lake Powell, the Colorado River's two biggest reservoirs. Lake Mead's low levels are indicative of dangerously low levels throughout the Colorado River Basin. Ms. Pitt said the basin is now, quote, dangerously near to a day zero catastrophe, end quote, referring to the point at which the reservoir runs dry. The satellite imagery emphasizes how severe the drought in the southwest has gotten. Lake Mead, the largest reservoir in the United States, supplies water to 25 million people in seven states, as well as some of the country's most important agricultural valleys. The federal government has made initiatives to preserve water in the Colorado River Basin in response to the mounting situation. For the first time, the federal government declared a water crisis at Lake Mead last summer. In response to worsening conditions, the Bureau of Reclamation, which administers water and power in the West, sent an emergency request to states in June, asking them to make urgent cuts for 2023 in order to save reservoirs from falling further. If you like the video so far, kindly hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. For those who don't, we hope they don't get any water for days. According to a recent examination of tree ring data, the photos, acquired by NASA's Landsat program between the years 2000 and 2022, depict the driest two-decade period since AD 800. Researchers have established that human-caused global warming has had a role in the current drought's persistence, despite some years of good precipitation over the last two decades. One reason for this could be because rising temperatures, rather than rain or snow, are driving the drought. The Lake Mead photographs provide a dramatic illustration of climate change and a long-term drought that may be the worst in the United States West in 12 millennia, according to NASA in a statement accompanying the images. The lake is only 27% full, the lowest level since the reservoir was built in 1937. Ms. Pitt, on the other hand, warned that the available water supply downstream was substantially lower due to the, quote, dead pool, which occurs when the reservoir's water level is too low to get through the dams. The lake's water level has dropped 158 feet to 1,041 feet in the last two decades between these photographs, according to the Bureau of Reclamation. To keep the dam's hydroelectric turbines running, lake levels must remain above 1,000 feet. Snowmelt in the Rocky Mountains typically replenishes the reservoir, which flows down into the Colorado River watershed. However, this year's snowfall has been below average. Will Lake Mead reach Deadpool? Lake Mead's water level has dropped more than 170 feet, 52 meters, since 1983, the year the Colorado River flooded Hoover Dam's spillways. If the reservoir dips below 895 feet, 272.8 meters, about 150 feet, 45 meters lower than where it is now, Lake Mead would reach what's called Deadpool level. Deadpool is when water in a reservoir drops so low that it can't flow downstream from the dam. If Lake Mead were to reach Deadpool, a possibility that scientists say is several years away, there would be dire consequences for the millions of people who rely on the reservoir for drinking water and irrigation. Elevation of the Minimum Power Pool According to some news outlets, a dead pool is the point at which a dam no longer has enough water to generate hydroelectricity. According to University of Arizona professor Robert Glennon, the more correct word for this is minimum power pool elevation. When a reservoir is so low that there isn't enough water flowing through a dam's turbines to spin them, the turbines can't produce energy. Glennon elaborated, When a reservoir's level approaches the minimum power pool height, 
the turbines lose capacity to produce power as they begin to take in air along with water and must be turned down before they are destroyed. When a reservoir reaches this level, it usually has a significant amount of water left before it dips to a dead pool and water ceases flowing from the dam. The minimum power pool elevation for Lake Mead in order for Hoover Dam to generate power is 950 feet, 289 meters, according to the United States Bureau of Reclamation. Reminder, Lake Mead's water level has plummeted to 1,040.92 feet, 317.3 meters, as of July 31, 2022, following a 22-year decreasing trend. The presence of a dead pool does not imply that there is no water remaining in the reservoir. However, even before Lake Mead reaches that level, water levels could fall so low that Hoover Dam would struggle to produce hydroelectric power. What steps are being taken? According to an NBC News story, the United States Bureau of Reclamation and Water Management throughout the southwestern United States have a strategy in place. They are working to manage the flow of water into the Colorado River and to regulate water use among the region's states. States that rely on water from the lower Colorado River have been exposed to the cuts that come with a Tier 1 shortage since January 2022. According to the most recent official projection for the Colorado River and Lake Mead, more dramatic water restrictions are all but guaranteed in the United States Southwest beginning next year, according to CNN on July 18, 2022. The House passed sweeping legislation this past Friday, July 29, 2022, to contribute $500 million to raise declining water levels in Lake Mead and Lake Powell. How does a lack of water influence states? Last year, the U.S. Department of Interior declared a water shortage in the lower basin, ordering restrictions for the first time under emergency guidelines developed in response to the drought in 2007. The Tier 1 shortfall cuts mostly impacted Arizona and Nevada, which would face significant reductions in water supplies when Tier 2 shortage requirements take effect in 2023. The Interior Department announced increased cuts earlier this month in response to what it called critically low reservoir conditions at Lakes Mead and Powell. Arizona will receive 21% less water than usual next year, while Nevada and Mexico will lose 8% and 7% respectively. The drought has already resulted in practical changes as states take serious steps to conserve resources, with over $12 billion from President Joe Biden's infrastructure law and the recently passed Inflation Reduction Act earmarked to improve Western water and power infrastructure and address drought-related challenges. In southern Nevada, water cops patrol neighborhoods looking for waste offenses and ornamental grass is prohibited. In Arizona, the majority of the savings are derived from a canal that serves 80% of the state's population, and without which, the key agricultural sector, as well as cities like Phoenix and Tucson, could not have grown to their current sizes. California escaped federal budget cuts both years. The Colorado River contributes between a quarter and a third of the total water supply to the state's southern portion, with the state receiving the biggest annual amount. Water diverted from the river and sent through two large canals that drain into Southern California provides irrigation and hydroelectric power to the region's 600,000 acres of agricultural. Even without federal aid, California's agriculture sector is risking massive losses due to a lack of water. Even though California is not currently receiving a cut in its water allocation, resources are very stretched out in California, particularly in Southern California, said Samuel Sandoval Solis, an associate professor at the University of California, Davis, and a cooperative extension specialist in water. As Northern California runoff decreased, state irrigation districts delivered less water to southern counties. Malika Noko, a cooperative extension scientist researching drought irrigation and Solis's colleague, said that as their allocations shrink, some farmers are exploring with conservation measures while many are electing to reduce their land and produce fewer crops instead. I work a lot with processing tomato growers, and I know that there are just fewer processing tomatoes being planted in California this year due to the drought, Noko said. Both she and Solis believe farmers will bear the brunt of the impacts of California's water shortfall. Perhaps the consumers going to market don't feel as much of the strain, Noko speculated. 
Farmers, farm owners, and agricultural workers are truly bearing the brunt of the strain because they have reduced production, income, and the number of wages. Isn't it the bottom line for them? What are your thoughts on it? Let us know in the comments. With this, we complete our film. We hope you enjoyed it. If so, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. If not, we hope you feel thirsty for the next two to three days. So you'd better sign up. We'll see you in the following video.